My name is Melissa Larson. I'm an occupational therapist and certified infant swimming resource instructor. I was invited by the Hop Hog Public Library to do a talk um, about uh, water safety and drowning prevention. Today is May 15th. It's International Water Safety Day. And we want to educate about steps you can take to protect your family whether or not you have a pool in your backyard, if you plan on installing a pool in your backyard, there are steps you can take um, to prevent an accidental drowning for your family. Uh, we talk about the layers of drowning prevention, and the idea being that uh, there's not just one answer um, to protect our children, but if we put multiple layers in place, that if one were to fail, there's one right behind it preventing an accident from occurring. Drowning is the leading cause of accidental death for children ages one to four, um, which is a shocking statistic for some. But once a child is mobile, even if they're crawling, they're at risk for finding themselves at a body of water alone. Um, so we want to A, prevent that from happening um, in the first place. And also there are things we can do if that does occur um, to prevent that from being a total disaster. Drowning is silent and it is quick, it happens in seconds, and our children are very resourceful and curious and also very quick, so we want to prevent the opportunity for them to be around water. The first layer of drowning prevention is obvious to some, um, but it is supervision. And effective supervision, we can keep our children away from danger. In an ideal world, we'd be keeping our eyes on our children all hours of the day, um, but we are all human, and the reality is that there are times where our children are out of our sight. We sleep, we shower, we work, and there are times we trust other people to watch our children. Um, sometimes when there are stories of drownings that occur, the first thing people say is, well, who wasn't watching that child? But the reality is that there are times of all of our days, I have two young children myself, there are times in my day that they get out of sight, they get into trouble, it's a little too quiet in the next room, and you go check on them and you see the videos on Facebook and um, you know there's a kid covering his brother in peanut butter and they colored on the dog with markers or uh, opened up all the band-aids and stuck them on the bathroom wall. And those are all things that children get into in seconds of unsupervised time. And that what happens in a um, drowning situation is that they happen to find water. Um, and instead of it being a cute video, it was a tragedy. We talk about um, if a gathering of adults and children around a pool to implement a water watcher system so that it doesn't happen that every adult at the party thinks that someone else would be watching and because everyone feels that way, then nobody is watching. So if you implement a system where you take 15 minute rotations of dedicated time to supervise the pool, no cell phone, no side conversation, just counting heads, making sure that no one's silently struggling. When another adult comes to relieve you, then you can um, leave your post and go enjoy the rest of the party. You can use a hat, a visor, we have water watcher tags we can give you. Just email me and I'll be sure to get one out to you as soon as possible. When there is an instance where you can't find um, your child, always check the water first. Um, again, drowning happens in seconds and those seconds count. So if there is an instance where you don't know where they are, don't check in the closet first or under the bed. Make sure you run out and check the pool. The second layer of protection against drowning um, include barriers, keeping your child away from the water. So that first barrier would be to keep them in the house when they're supposed to be in the house. Um, this means high locks on doors that they can't reach and alarms that chirp when the door's been open. Uh, if you don't have an alarm system that does this automatically, you can buy magnetic strips where you attach one to the frame and one to the door and when you open and the magnet disengages, it chirps to allow um, let you know that that door has been open. Also, if you have doggy doors in your home, seal them up permanently. If you don't have one, don't install one. They're the perfect height and size for a child to crawl through, and they open and close in such a way that it doesn't alert you that it's been breached. If you walk by a sliding glass door and see that it's been opened, you know to go check outside for your child. A doggy door being closed won't alert you right away, and it might be a delay in um, finding that child. 
in the event that your child does make it outside um, when you thought you closed the door but you didn't and they made it out behind you. Um, the next layer of prevention would be a four-sided pool gate surrounding the pool itself, not just around the yard, but where it protects the pool itself um, with a self-closing, self-locking pool gate. We also want to make sure that there's a zero tolerance policy for leaving that gate propped open. Uh, if you have uh, landscapers that come in and prop the gate open to let their machines in, you want to make sure they understand that if you were to come home and find that gate propped open, that they are no longer your landscaper. Um, the idea being that they will then take that knowledge to the next house with a pool and remember not to leave the gate propped open. So then you would um, be effectively making the community safer. You also want to make sure to not store any light patio furniture or little tykes picnic tables or slides or cars outside that can be pushed up against the gate for your child to then climb up and over. Also, don't store your beach balls and inflatable flamingos in your pool so that um, it's more enticing. The water is enticing enough. The children are curious enough that you don't want to make it look more like a playground to, for them to really want to get in there. In the event that your child makes it out of sight, makes it out into the yard, and makes it to the edge of the pool by themselves, the next layer of, of prevention against drowning is actually the child themselves. What do they understand about the water um, to make their next move? Because again, they're impulsive, their judgment is not always very clear. We want them to have an understanding of what the water expects of them. So if that child has only had a history of jumping in the pool with a flotation device on and being told that they're so brave for jumping right in and that they're magically floated up to the top, um, that's what they will expect to happen with or without that device because that, that is their experience, that is their motor learning of water. They don't have to react or assume any sort of posture. They will just stay up with the air at all times. And that's not what will happen in the water um, if they jump in uh, without any knowledge or without any skill. Coast Guard approved flotation devices are for boating, for open water. They are not to be used for learning to swim because they don't teach a child about their own buoyancy. Um, what you want your child to understand about the water is A, that they enter the water with an adult only. So if that's their experience, they have to hold someone's hand just like crossing the street. They need to look for that adult. Is it okay that we go in the water now? You want them to have that understanding. And B, you want them to know that the water won't do anything for them. The water won't rise them back up to the top. The water is unforgiving. And um, if they don't know how to float on their back or how to turn around and get out of the pool on their own, um, they're going to be in a lot of trouble very quickly. When you are looking for swim lessons for your child, make sure that they have a quality survival component that teaches your child what to do in an emergency. If they were to fall in fully clothed, if they were to fall in with shoes on and a jacket on, if they were to fall in wearing their diaper that swells up to 10 times its own weight, we want that child to not panic. Um, we want them to react appropriately and to know that they have the skill to get themselves out of the pool or to float and breathe and wait for help and call for help. The American Academy of Pediatrics recently lowered their recommended age for beginning swim lessons from age four to now recommending starting at age one because they realized they were missing this critical window of instruction when children were drowning. Um, it's more important that these children understand how, how to react in the water and not panic and not get themselves um, into a lot of trouble. The last um, layer of protection against drowning is knowing CPR. In the event that a child is found in the water, we want to return oxygen into their body and their brain as soon as possible, and we don't want to delay in reacting. Even a child that is skilled um, to know how to react in the water, um, in the event that they hit their head falling in the water or rendering themselves unconscious, they won't be able to react. So we want to have an adult there that knows how to save their life um, at the edge of the pool, if at all possible. We don't want you waiting for calling for help for someone who knows how to help and waiting for that person because again, seconds matter. So again, to review, the layers of protection against drowning include supervision, 
locks and alarms on all doors leading out of the house, a four-sided pool fence with a self-closing, self-locking pool gate, um, skilling the child to know how to save their own life if they were to fall in the water unexpectedly, and knowing CPR. Also, it's important to consider not swimming alone with your child or your children. Um, if something were to happen to you, that they would be alone near a body of water without another adult nearby. Um, you also want an adult to be able to call for help in the event that you need help. Um, so it's something to consider. I know it might not be possible for everyone, but um, it is um, worth thinking about. Um, if you are going to be swimming in a body of water or going to a public place or to a pool party, um, also think about dressing your child in bright colored bathing suits and rash guards, neons, pinks, yellows. Um, we don't want, um, in the event that a child is struggling, we don't want a child in a blue rash guard in a blue swimming pool being difficult to find. Um, because again, seconds count. We need to find that child as fast as possible and get them help as soon as possible. If there's any questions of anything I've said tonight or um, you'd like any more information, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, my email address is m.larson at infantswim.com. Also, if you'd like uh, a water safety class for your group or your organization, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we wanna get this information out there, let everyone you know. Um, about what you've learned and what you plan on implementing to make your family safe this summer. Thank you so much, for everyone, for listening. Stay safe, stay home, stay healthy.